What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Eddie Knight. Welcome back to Nerdy Before It Was Cool, where we nerd out about TV and film, especially ones based on comic book characters. Like usual, I was scouring the internet and I came across a lot of top superhero movies of all times lists. Most of the publications just seem to be basing them off of the scores on their website, but I came across one from The Looper that actually had a little bit of personality. I'm gonna go over their list and just have a little convo about these movies, very similar to what I did with my CW shows video. And by the way, I forgot to do a 20,000 subs and a 30,000 sub giveaway. So this is a Superman the Animated Series Flash. To win the giveaway, all you have to do is guess my rankings for all the DCAU shows. I put all of them in the pinned comment in the comment section. All you gotta do is check all of those and then type in the comments what you think my ranking is. The one who is the closest to my rankings, I will pick to get give the Flash figurine. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this superheroes list. Now this list from Looper is actually a top 55 superhero movie list, but for time's sake, I'm only gonna talk about the top 15. All right, so number 15, they have Avengers Endgame and off the rip, just according to how they placed everything, I would definitely disagree with this placement because I think Avengers Infinity War is a far better movie than Avengers Endgame. That last 30 minutes is goaded. It tugs on your nostalgia strings. I am Iron Man. And I am Iron Man. It has an immense number of callbacks from all of the movies over the years, but Endgame was one of those movies that I knew I would never watch again after I left the theater. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but simply because that was a turn your brain off and just enjoy and celebrate the past 11 years. And me personally, I didn't want the feeling that I felt after watching that movie to be tainted by a rewatch. So I just never watched it again in full. I have watched that final battle a lot though. But yeah, I would disagree simply because I don't think Avengers Endgame is better than Infinity War. Number 14, they have Batman Returns. Look man, uh, I don't mind this placement at all, man. I have a lot of nostalgia bias on this placement. I'm a huge, huge Tim Burton fan. I've touched on this before, but the way he embodied Christmas in this movie, it's like basically the perfect anti-Christmas film. Usually when you see a Christmas movie, everything is jolly and happy, but nobody ever really Really talks about that bittersweet aspect of Christmas. If you have kids, the stress that comes with not being able to get them things that they want, or even things like family members that you've lost in the past, it really taps into all that. And on top of that, we get Batman right out of the gate. Michelle Pfeiffer killed it as Catwoman. DeVito killed it as Penguin. Walken killed it as the mayor. Like there wasn't a single bad performance in this movie, in my opinion. And when I watched this thing as a kid, Michael Keaton was just Batman, bro. He was Batman. Number 13, we got The Incredibles. No matter what site you go on, man, Incredibles is rated up amongst the top. On Rotten Tomatoes, I even think The Incredibles was like number one or number two next to Into the Spider-Verse. If I'm thinking of all of my favorite superhero movies of all time, I don't know if this one necessarily cracks my personal top 15, but it doesn't take away from how good this movie is. A lot of people try to say that these movies are for kids, but there's a lot of adult themes running through The Incredibles. I mean, you got the dad who is a retired superhero, well past his prime, still wishing he could get back in the game. There's a lot of parallels between like people like myself who are former athletes. And even though I am well content in not being an athlete anymore, I'd be a liar if I said there wasn't times. I just sit and kind of reminisce. So you have those themes running through there. You have all the things things going on between Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl and their relationship and how it kind of can get when you're in a relationship with somebody who gets mentally checked out. It's a lot of deep rooted themes in this movie that I really love and enjoy. And this is one of those movies that is super rewatchable. So I'm not mad at this placement at number 13 for The Incredibles. Unbreakable, directed by old M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan, I don't know how to say his name. His movies are very, and I mean very, 
very hit or miss for me. He's a great director. Sometimes I feel like he sacrifices character development for a twist. With that being said, I have not seen Unbreakable. I'm sure I'll enjoy it when I check it out, but I can't speak on whether or not it's a good placement because I haven't seen it. At number 11, we got Captain America Winter Soldier. Me personally, it's one of my favorite Marvel movies and one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. I really like the spy thriller aspect of this movie. It was really interesting and entertaining all the way through. There's only one part that I don't really know how I feel about this film, and that's the reveal that Peggy is still alive because it kind of takes away from that beautiful ending in Captain America the First Avenger. You gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I'm not crying it's just been raining. That's just my personal opinion. Let me know how you feel about that down in the comments. Me personally, this would be bumped up some slots for me, probably in my top seven or eight. Batman Begins at number 10. This movie was super interesting. It was a remix of the Batman mythos that we've never seen before. And honestly, this is, in my opinion, out of the Chris Nolan trilogy, this is the most like accurate Batman. I love the Dark Knight. I enjoy Dark Knight Rise but the fantastical elements that I feel like kind of need to be there with Batman kind of lacked in those and they were very full and present in Batman Begins. I loved how grounded it was but I also loved how he wasn't too afraid to introduce comic book elements. I mean we got Liam Neeson playing Ra's al Ghul of all characters. This was the last movie where they actually created a set for Gotham and didn't use a real city like Chicago. I know this movie gets a lot of praise looking looking back, but it actually didn't kill it at the box office. In very similar fashion to this more recent Matt Reeves The Batman, it actually sold a little bit less than expected at first, but then caught up later down the road because the critical reviews and the fan response kept it alive. That's just kind of how it goes when you have a rebooted superhero. But anyways, love this movie. I like this placement. I don't know where it would fall in my top 10, but I would definitely have it in my top 10. Black Panther, R.P. Chadwick Boseman. They have Black Panther at number nine. Honestly, a really amazing performance from Chadwick Boseman, an amazing performance from Michael B. Jordan. Black Panther was definitely a really big moment for the MCU and a big moment for a lot of comic book fans. His introduction in Civil War was insane and he just brought this visceral intensity to the character that I hoped would bleed on into this movie, but in my opinion, it wasn't quite there as much here. I did enjoy this movie a lot, and it would probably would make my top 15, but I don't think it would crack my top 10. I would probably bump this down just a few slots. Visually looks amazing. From a performance level, amazing. They had Angela Bassett, Forrest Whitaker. The cast was great. Nobody missed a beat, but just story-wise, it was good but I was kind of hoping for more if I'm being honest. Great movie, still really good, and it would make my top 15. I just don't think it would make my top 10. Number eight, we have Thor Ragnarok. I had no idea there was a, such a big divide between people who like old Thor and people who like new Thor. I think the new comedic tone does work for Thor a lot, in my opinion, and I know Taika Waititi's style and way of writing is very hit or miss for some people. It's very overtly comedic. And that's something that even I've criticized about a lot of MCU movies. But I think it worked for Thor Ragnarok. I enjoy comedic Thor, but I also enjoy the more Shakespearean serious tone Thor. For me, in a perfect world, we would meet somewhere in the middle of those two extremely different versions of Thor. I rate it in the upper tier of the MCU movies. I just don't know if I would have it at top eight on my personal top 15 list. Honestly, even though I did enjoy it and I did like it, I don't 
think it would even crack my top 15. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 at number seven. People seem to talk about this one like it's some huge major step down from the first one, but I don't look at it that way. I don't think it's quite as good as the first one, but I still think it holds up next to it as well. And if Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is better than Guardians of the Galaxy 2, then when it comes to MCU trilogies, we're gonna have to put some respect on this one as possibly one of the best trilogies in the MCU. I'm really excited to see Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and I hope they go out with a bang. Next at number six is Superman 78, another superhero movie on this list that I have not yet to watch. I know it's blasphemous. I haven't seen the grandfather of all superhero movies. The success of this film really jump-started. Superhero films in general, I'm considering watching it soon. Maybe I'll do a watch along. Let me know if that's something that you'll tune into. All right, now we're at the top five, the big dogs, the ones that they have as the five best comic book movies of all time. And at number five, we got the OG 2012 Avengers. Looking back at the first Avengers, it's kind of crazy to see where the MCU is now. When I go back and watch this film, it is very enjoyable and it's very nostalgic and I do like it and enjoy it. So I would not argue with anyone who put the OG Avengers in their top five. It wouldn't be in my personal top five, but this is a respectable placement. I wouldn't even argue with you if you had it up higher. Me personally, I'd probably have it around nine, maybe 10, but I would not argue with anyone who had this in their top five. Cool placement. Number four, we got Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 for a long time. This was considered the best superhero movie and it's understandable why. I know everybody loves them some Green Goblin and William Dafoe is the man, but for me, Doc Ock is still my favorite villain from that trilogy. I just think the connection that him and Peter had just made him as a villain so much more tragic. I think Doc Ock was a much more effective villain in this particular trilogy. I really like how Sam Raimi tapped into his horror vibes in this film. For 2004, man, this visually just looks so amazing. And once again, it just makes me miss when directors use more practical effects and less CG. The inner struggle between Spider-Man and Peter Parker and everything he wants is Peter Parker slowly just slipping away. The more he becomes Spider-Man and the more he leans into the Spider-Man persona was amazing and super heartbreaking to watch. This movie is literally like a template for any writer that wants to get the audience to learn how to care about your hero. Masterclass, love this thing. At number three, they have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It was a point in time where I thought people were maybe overrating this thing a little bit, but I went back and watched it before No Way Home came out, and man, this is good. They really fixed the character of Miles Morales for me. I never was a huge fan of the Miles Morales Spider-Man before this movie. I always thought he was okay, but he just came off more of a, like a cheap copy and paste version of Peter Parker with a couple of different powers. That's just how he felt felt to me, but here I really love the Miles Morales character. I like the introduction of Spider-Man Noir and Spider-Gwen, Spider-Ham and all that. It was just like a big callback to watching those Spider-Verse episodes in the Spider-Man TV shows back in the day. The animation was perfect. It legitimately looked like a living comic book. It kind of played with our emotions and our nostalgia and kind of played on those tropes to make some really cool comedic moments. This was really good, man. And as a Spidey fan, I'm super hyped for the second. Number two, we got Logan. Logan is super dope, man. And this is one of those movies where it's not just a comic book movie. This is just a really good movie, especially if you're a fan of that old Western genre or that genre of films where our aged hero or assassin has to come out of retirement for one last hoorah. This is basically what that film is. The X-Men franchise is very 
very, very hit or miss for me. There's some that I really love. There's some that are super skippable. And then there are some that are just bad movies. The thing that I like about Logan is how grounded it feels compared to all of those other films. And it just makes me think about the Wolverine trilogy within the X-Men universe and how different it could have been if they took this approach with him from day one. If they did that, we might have to be talking about that Wolverine trilogy as being one of the best. I really loved how small the scale was in this movie. It wasn't the end of the world. It was extremely intimate. And we've seen our superheroes get old in films before, but I don't think we've ever seen it be portrayed as bleak and as visceral as it was in this film with Xavier literally deteriorating. And, and the same thing for Wolverine, their biggest powers is what is killing them now. Logan is a great film. In my opinion, it's one of the best comic book movies of all time. I don't think I would have it at two on my personal list, but it would definitely be in my top five. And last but not least at number one is The Dark Knight. And honestly, what else did you really expect? This is a great movie, man. It's one of those that fall in the same category as Logan for me. You have to kind of talk about it as more than a comic book movie. I've said this before in my Batman movie ranking video, but the most interesting part about this film is it's not really a Batman movie. It's kind of more of a Joker movie, but even on top of that, if you took away Batman and the Joker, and just made them other people. Like make the Joker a war veteran who's just gone mad and make Batman a retired cop who's been fired from the force. This movie still stays exactly the same. And I think that's the main reason why the masses and even people who aren't comic book fans or comic book movie fans really enjoyed this a lot. As a Batman fan, the movie definitely has its flaws. I mean, I thought some of the fight sequences were very weak in this trilogy in general. And the setting of it just being filmed in Chicago kind of took away from some of those more Batman comic book elements but overall, this is just a really enjoyable film. Amazing performances, amazing action set pieces. And you know Chris Nolan is known for doing his practical stunts, which is just something that we don't see too much of in movies these days, especially in the superhero genre. But anyways, let me know your top 15 list down in the comments. Which one of these would you change? What movies would you add? What movies would you take out? Let me know down below. It's your boy, Eddie Knight, and I'm out.